I'm going to move for one moment now to try to, to bring out the home and school connection between some of this, and I think that that's also where some of the um, implications for children who don't have the same resources at home can come. And I want to bring up um, Robert Torres from the Gates Foundation, who is a senior program officer for Gates, who has been exploring um, the question of the educational technologies used in the school and how it connects to homes um, and can be of, of use in bridging that divide. So we'll just take a minute here, and Robert, do you mind, do you want to come up sure. here to speak for a few minutes? And, yeah. um, and yes, we can keep the, uh, keep the conversation going. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, so, gosh, um, what an amazing conversation today. And I wanted to say congratulations to Joe Gascuni Center and to, and to Vicki. Um, as a, I work in a complex place where, um, I mean, it's in a very exciting place, but we are huge. There's 1,400 of me. Um, and unlike a, a typical foundation, we'll have three you know, program officers in one division. I have a team of 120. Um, and so we make grants through debate, right? And we, um, and we argue, and, uh, and it's great. It's really peer, a peer culture. And, but I have to say, the Joan Gascuni Center makes my life really easy. <laughs> like, you guys just make it with reports like these. It's just, you know, the evidence of your work is constant and awesome. So congratulations. Um, and Vicki, thank you so much for wanting to keep the spotlight on the kids who are, are, are hardest to reach. I appreciate this debate. The 100 languages of children, the Reggio Emilia model is awesome. We have lots to learn there. Um, but we have an issue. Kids are dying in schools, but literally dying, right? Um, and unless we do something, I mean, I, I in my career, have seen um, maybe a thousand classrooms that I've been in. Um, and, um, and I could have stayed in, in being a school reformer and be happily ever middle class and be part of the multi-billion dollar um, reform industry, but I didn't. I went to see if video games can say, do something um, for our kids since 97% of our kids are playing. Um, so, ooh. I'm out of power. <laughs> <laughs> I know that works. Um, okay, 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 I'll be quick. Um, so I, just, uh, I, have to, I have to throw out one quote by uh, Marshall McLuhan just because it's so appropriate to this um, fun versus um, learning thing, which is ridiculous. Anyway, so, uh, so it, it, I love this quote. Uh, anyone who thinks there is a difference between education and entertainment doesn't know the first thing about either. <laughs> um, and you know, and if you look then to research in learning sciences and um, and, uh, um, and and cognitive science, um, we know that the that deep mastery sits at that intersection of high uh, engagement and high cognitive demand. We just know that, right? Um, and so you know. Um, part of my work has been, part of the work that I fund is asking ourselves, how do we make um, uh, learning chemistry and algebra as addictive, yes, addictive, um, as um, uh, Call of Duty, right? Uh, and that is, I think, for us in this room, the greatest design challenge. I think that is what we're up for, is solving for that. Like, how do we create those conditions? So we know that we can. A game like Folded creates those conditions, and then kids do the remarkable. I'm not going to get into Folded. But if you don't know what I'm referring to, with 15 kids solving major scientific problems, definitely look up Folded. Um, I just want to make a quick point. I'm supposed to talk about pathways and the Home Bridge Connection, and I'm going to get there, I promise. Um, so, um, just some stuff about just market data. So we as a foundation are unusual in that we look to incentivize markets. Um, so we don't make single point solution grants, like fund the big project we have um, before, and I used to, but we, now we look to say there is a dearth of products in literacy in, in, a, in, a, in a market, so we throw money there. So we'll create competitions. 
Um, and so we have done product scans in literacy and and and, and uh, high quality products in the older grades. They just don't exist. They just don't. They really don't. The, the, if we look at the top apps in iTunes and Android, they are the best sellers are for the um, in the lowest um, for, for the youngest kids. So that's that's that just is that just aren't there. Um, on pathways, um, and, I'll, and, I, and I promise I'll be done just now. You know, we gave to Bill Gates a, a five-page paper um, uh, in May about um, this notion of how do we do the home, uh, how do we bridge this home school um, uh, connection, and um, which, um, if you think of yourself as a kid, that those separations are ridiculous, right? That there is like for a kid as a kid. Um, and, and we should try to create a seamless life for them. So we came up with the notion, and I'll, I won't get into the details. I can share the five-pager um, vision paper um, with everyone. Um, for It's a vision for personalized learning. Um, and essentially, it's a learning map that has the metaphor of a tree. Um, and what we want to do is visualize for kids um, um, create visualizations, especially for the neediest kids, um, what it means uh, to master, when you master a competency in the eighth grade, something, it, you know, will light up in that trunk of the tree. Um, but more importantly, um, uh, possible futures will also light up so that there is um, a sense of relevance um, and significance um, that will hopefully engender some persistence. That's a big issue for our kids. They don't see why school is relevant to them. Um, and so, so that those branches are careers. So that we really should think about, real, and technology allows us to really think about the K-16 continuum. There's no reason for us to do that, and we can create the assets that populate those pathways, um, um, K-16. through 16. <coughs> 